Welcome to Smart Branding, a podcast dedicated to branding, naming, and domain names. I'm Tatiana Bonneau, and with my guests, we try to help you create and grow strong, memorable, and meaningful brands online. I believe time is one of our most precious assets, and so I want to thank you in advance if you decide to spend the next 30 minutes with us. I promise to do my best to make those worth it. Let's go. So today my guest is Tony Kitchens. He's a successful entrepreneur, author, and keynote speaker with a passion for personal development. Hi, and thank you for joining us, Tony. Hello, Tatiana. Thank you for having me, and I look forward to having this conversation for your audience. I think they're going to get a little bit of good information from it. Wonderful. Let's start with my standard first question. Give me a little bit of a background. Who, who is Tony Kitchens, and how did you get to do what you do? I'm a 52-year-old, 32-year entrepreneur, <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Which, which, which translates to me having payroll and employees and a whole bunch of responsibilities since the age of 20. So I've been doing this for a very long time, and I'm just really happy to be at a point in my life where I'm sharing what I've learned through interviews like this, through other, mm. other platforms. And to just be at a, a level of peace in my life, mm. had a lot of responsibilities, but now I'm just really looking forward to enjoying life, still growing, but really just kind of taking it all in. Mm. And so what, what do you do currently? I provide consulting services for small businesses and even individuals. I do international speaking engagements as well. And I'm an author. I've written a book mm. called The Gift of Pain, which took me several months to write. And Tatiana, here's the thing. When I finished that book, when I gave it to the editor, she cut out 100 pages. <laughs> really? And I, and I was still left with 353 pages. I had a lot to oh, say. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> but those are the three things that I'm focusing on today. Mm. What's the book about? Talk to me about that. It's a memoir. It was basically a diary. I started mm. writing and I was just trying to figure out how to get through a tough patch in my life a couple of years ago. And the world was shut down, as we mm. all remember. And I just sat there and I started typing. It was, it was really just me trying to remember how I got through any difficult time in the past so that I can bring those tools to the situation I was dealing with at the time. And I just started going one by one, the difficult times. And eventually mm. I said, wow, this is probably really good for someone else to hear or to read about because these same tools can apply to anybody's life. So it was mm. really a story of survival. It's really a story of overcoming difficulties. It was a story of how life goes on when things in your life aren't going so well. And we all face those things. Mm. And I'm, I'm looking at your website at the moment. You you kind of you are um, your audience are, are people who in a way are if I understand correctly who in a way are successful they they seem like you know they've achieved something in life but they still uh, feel trapped or feel that there's uh, there's uh, something missing and how how do you help those people? Absolutely, and there, and there's two pieces to the audience, and the one that you just mentioned is 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 accurate. It's the people who've achieved, like you, looking at all your trophies. You've obviously <laughs> accomplished a lot, right? You set goals, you achieve those goals. And there are a lot of people like that in the world. But what happens is sometimes they realize the goals that they set weren't necessarily goals that they wanted to have. Maybe mm -hmm. it was the influence that your parents had. And they wanted you to do whatever it is that you're doing now. They wanted you to be a doctor. And now mm -hmm. you're a doctor. You're very successful. You're miserable. Because deep down inside, you were really trying to please them, not going after what you wanted. So that's one part of the audience. But Tatiana, the other part of the audience is it's the people who are not quite sure what they want to do. Mm. And I work with these individuals and again, even business owners, and they are just not quite sure of how to put together a path, a strategy to accomplish their dreams and their goals. And some of them would tell you, I don't have any dreams. Mm. But ultimately, they do. The longer we talk, the more they realize that, oh, well, that's a dream. They just thought <laughs> it was a good feeling they got when they thought about certain things or doing certain things. 
Mm. Those are the two audiences that I that I definitely work with. Mm. And what would you say um, in your experience is something that you feel since our audience is more consisting of um, entrepreneurs, people who who are sort of striving to to be successful and independent, and and that independence and freedom is a huge part of. Um, following your dreams, why, why many people launch themselves into entrepreneur, entrepreneurships. What would you say is, um, like, if you could pick something that's really common that people get wrong and if you have, you know, magic stick, you could, like, get them to change that. Is there something like that or is it all different in each video? It's different, but here's something that I would say. A lot of entrepreneurs get into business almost not by accident, but because of necessity. Mm. They lost their job or they find themselves not making as much money as they need to. They have to figure out a way to do something else along with their regular job. And they, a lot of them find entrepreneurship out of those types of situations. And then some people are very in, in tension about what they do in life. The thing that I would say is either one of those two scenarios, you have to remember that you as an individual are going to be different. The longer you're in business, you are going to change as a person. You're going to mm-hmm. change on the outside. You're going to change on the inside. The other thing is, as long as as long as you work hard every single day and are reinvesting in your business by learning more, taking the profits, growing your business, your business is going to look way different than it looks when you first started. So you may be the practitioner, you may be doing the work, baking the cookies, Mm. or you may be shipping the boxes of items every single day. But down the road, you're going to be managing people who do that on your behalf. And that's a very different business. Mm. And what I find with entrepreneurs is the one thing that they don't realize is in that evolution going from the practitioner where they're very happy because that's the the work that they love. Mm. Now you become your own HR department, your human resource department. Now you're managing people. And it Mm. isn't as fun as it was when it was just you sitting on the floor boxing up some toys, right? Mm. It's not as fun as it used to be. So what happens at that point? You have to really have a different purpose of being in business than you did the first day you started. So that Mm. evolution from where you began to where you're going to be later is extremely important. So I would tell every entrepreneur or Prospective entrepreneur listening, understand that you will evolve as a person. Your business will evolve as an institution. And when you get to that place for either one of those scenarios to become a reality, you need to figure out a different reason why you're doing what you're doing. Because Mm -hmm. you're going to have to wake up early in the morning and do something that you may not necessarily like doing. And then a lot of entrepreneurs at that point, they say, "Ah, you know, this is not fun. And that's where that sadness comes in. That's where that Mm. feeling of I'm very successful, but I'm not happy. That's when it starts to really hit home. Mm. So for some reason, uh, the, the, the saying, be careful what you wish for, you may just get it comes to mind. Absolutely. As, as you were saying that, yeah. I, I think that's very true that people don't, um realize don't don't think through the little details of you know when you're wishing for something how does that actually work and how does that actually uh look and then pan that out throughout you know the beers to come yeah yeah but the the key to that because none of us have a crystal ball right Mm. tatiana here's here's what i think entrepreneurs should do it's find someone who's there right now If you're just starting a business, find someone who is at the place where you're looking to go or who's already been there and has moved on beyond that and connect Mm. with them. Have a conversation. I can have those conversations all day long Mm. because what you'll find is then you'll kind of know what to expect. Mm. You'll understand what's lying ahead. Some people call them mentors. Some people call them advisors, Mm -hmm. strategists whatever you want to call them, is connecting with people who have been or who are where you're looking to go. That's extremely important in this journey. Mm. 
And especially now it's so like you have access to so much information. So, so many people like even, you know, in the past that it would have been like hard to, to, to get hold of, of people or to even now you don't even have to get hold of people. Most people share, you know, talk all the time, share their experience about whatever it is they're doing. So it's very accessible if you, if you put the time into and the effort into looking into it. Absolutely. And, and with all of that information is out there, there's a lot of noise too. Sure. And you have to be very careful <laughs> who you listen to because I know you've seen it as well. There will be somebody that looks like they're four years old telling you how to run a business because mm. they were successful selling some toys online. <laughs> that's not really a business. That's a side hustle. Mm. Right. So when you talk to people and they say they're successful and they show you a snapshot of their bank account on YouTube, as a business owner, I would say, show me your tax return. <laughs> I can make up a bank statement mm. and, put, and, and do a, put a picture of it online, but show me a tax return. Mm. How much did you spend your ad revenue to make that money, right? Mm. There's a lot that goes into true legitimate businesses. And yes, there's a lot of information out there it's a, there's a lot of noise and we have to figure out how to look for the signs of people who are legitimate and understand what they're really talking about. And sometimes that could be very difficult. Even for me, it's, there are so many ads about this, that webinars and mm. free course and everything else. And it's just a sales pitch and you, you pull back the layers and these people have zero experience in business. They just have a lot of experience marketing. Two mm. different things. Mm. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. And I, I was going to ask you that, like, if, let's say, well, we, we spoke, uh, we touched on what is your target audience? What are the type of people that you can help? Um, so what, that was going to be one of my questions. What would be some things to look at and what would be some, like, red lights for those type of people when they're looking for a mentor, when they're looking for a coach, somebody like yourself? The one thing I would say is, and this is taking it back old school just a little bit, but <laughs> there are a lot of online courses. You never get to physically interact with the instructor. Mm. So what that means is, is in that course, they're telling you something, but you never have an opportunity to question them based on your unique need, which mm. is different. And out of all the business owners I've known in my life and all the experiences I've had, there's no one who can say, this is how business goes. Every mm. business situation is different, vastly different in a lot of cases. So when you're looking at people online who can say that I can 10 X your revenue, I can get you 30,000 new clients tomorrow. I can mm. get a hundred thousand followers the week after that. Here's the reality. If it was really that easy, if it was truly that easy, there would be a lot more major corporations in the world as opposed to individuals who have a side hustle. Mm. Nobody can 10x your business but you. You can bring in consultants, you can bring in strategists, you can bring in these people, but ultimately you're going to be the one doing the work and you have to have the product or solution or offering that's mm. scalable, for example. So as, as I talk to your audience and as we sit and discuss this, what should you look for with some of these people? It's a proven track record beyond mm. just the marketing, the, the glamorous marketing piece. But if somebody is, is predicting that they can do all of those things, 10X, 20X your business tomorrow, you know, a, a million followers by next week, any of those things, the thing that I would say is you should probably run, run <laughs> for the hills, literally because you're going to engage with them. You're going to pay a lot of money and they're going to give you a very cooker, cookie cutter thing approach. And they're going to say, well, you need to be on TikTok three times a week. Mm. <laughs> Create an email list. That's what they're going to tell you. Create an email list, get on social media and post. That's what they're going to tell you. But mm. when I work with my clients, we spend a lot of time understanding who they are, not just as a business person, but as a human being, because the reality is you as a human are going to drive your business. You're either going to drive it up or you're going to drive it down. So the change comes with the person, 
not necessarily mm-hmm. in the business. So if you change the person, if you're able to provide guidance for the individual, then when they wake up the next morning, they'll have more tools to be able to do better marketing, to reach out to more clients. But the work is always done with the business owner, always mm. done. And I would say, again, going back to the dinosaur model, can you actually talk to somebody, some, someone? Mm. Are they for an opportunity to physically speak, to physically work with them specifically on your business? If you can find that, then that is a win-win. It's a win for you and it's a win for them because you build that relationship. But mm. if it's just a strict course online, you can't interact with anyone, you'll get cookie cutter stuff that may work for three or four businesses, but for the vast majority, it won't work. Mm. And that's kind of, um, because I, I work with um, branding, naming, domain names as part of that. So it's a lot about brand and more and more often we talk about personal branding and that's kind of touching on on what you were saying and i think it's more and more relevant where like before you could separate the brand from the person even like to to a point where like people would you know look at some advertising and trust it because they saw it on telly and you know they 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 connect that image with uh, okay it was there so i can trust it and i'll buy that and now I'm looking at like my kids, for example, they, they're not only going to look at, you know, the, the advertising is like a drop in the ocean for them. They're almost like nobody cares about it anymore. It's more like who's the CEO, who is the whatever, what are people saying, what are the employees of that company doing really like in real life, what do they stand for, et cetera, et cetera. So like the brand and the person are, are so, so much more connected now. It's, it's pretty much, I think, impossible to disconnect them. So how do you what you said that you work with the person which then flows into the 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 business how do you feel that has changed over time and where is it going as as we go into the future i think it's coming back to the personal relationships there is a point Mm. within the past few years where everybody was doing everything online i understand there was there was a need for that because that's all that we could do as entrepreneurs, as business people, you had to connect online because you physically couldn't be in front of people. But I honestly believe at this point, there is a there is a movement to have more interaction, more human interaction. And and kudos to your kids, because they're exactly right. Anybody can put anything online and try Mm. to sell you whatever it is that they're trying to sell you. But I think there's this move People want to talk to a human being again. People want to connect with the person because as you and I talk, even though this podcast is just audio, but I'm looking at you in your eyes and you're looking at me in my eyes and we're having a conversation. Mm -hmm. And the beauty of that conversation is the audience is getting a more genuine experience Mm -hmm. than just reading a screen, reading some words on a screen, right? Mm -hmm. Reading an ad. And in my case in business, what I've learned is, yeah, the personal brand is extremely important and it connects directly with the company brand. And we have to be extremely careful about what we put out as individuals if we have businesses, Mm -hmm. because ultimately your personal Facebook account, your personal Instagram account is going to bleed over into your business somehow, some way. What you like, Mm -hmm. what you repost what you post, people are going to look at that and say, is that congruent with the values that you say your company has? And if not, there's a disconnect. So mm. is the advertising from the company false or are you posting false information? And then like your kids say, they're going to run away from that. They're mm. not going to buy into it because it doesn't make sense. But we, the personal relationship, Tatiana, are definitely coming back. And for businesses, that's very exciting because what that's going to do is it's going to separate you and I from other people who just want to make a quick buck selling an online course that there's really no value in. Because what happens when you don't get value? You've paid $500 for a course. Then you're frustrated. Mm. You haven't grown. Your business is not doing any better. And then now you're jaded. Now the internet is the bad thing. And you want to run from it. You're frustrated in your business because you felt like you made a bad fiscal decision. But when you can talk to people and see people, you're going to get value from that. 
Absolutely. Mm. What do you see now, that now that we're talking about, I, I, and I definitely agree with that, um, but people are looking for more personal human connection. And we have like artificial intelligence now with all the chatbots. We had chatbots for quite some time, but now they're getting like really good. Um, how do you feel that's going to pan out? Do you do you feel it's it's going to substitute in a way human connection or how do you see that working out? I think chats are a very good tool for people who understand how to use them to enhance what they're doing, not to replace what mm. they're doing. So for example, if I wanted to get some copy done to edit my website, for example, instead of paying $150 an hour for someone to create content for me, I can put some of my content in, in chat GPT, for example, and it's going to kick out a rewording of what I put in. So I can mm -hmm. use that. And I can use that information instead of hiring an individual to do that. So situations like that are great. I wouldn't use mm -hmm. it to write a book because that should come from your heart. But it's mm -hmm. definitely a good tool to use when you know what you're trying to say. Maybe you're just not sure of how to say it. It's an excellent tool. It's mm -hmm. never going to replace, again, the relationships. Business is about relationships, plain and simple. It's about mm. relationships. And imagine doing business with a robot. Mm. What's, the, what's the point of that? That's just a transaction. That's not a business relationship. So that, mm. that tool is very important. Those are really good tools. However, I think that ultimately it's going to find its place. It'll settle into its place. But it's just going to be a situation where it's going to be a compliment to us doing business as, as mm. human beings. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a hundred percent agree with you on that. And, and that's been kind of a recurring theme in, in my, well, ever since chat GPT came out um, in all the podcasts that I've had. And I think the majority of, of uh, entrepreneurs that I talk to are of, of that opinion, myself included that, definitely actually very exciting to to see how it works as an enhancement as a tool um and you can already see um oh, oh my god i don't know if you have that i've started because i deal with premium domain names so i do receive a lot of inquiries every day for different names people interested in those and and now like they're all using chat gpt like a huge <laughs> huge majority and and you can you can see it you can see it people that are just copy pasting it's the same style the same wording and i'm like why why people and actually in a way i'm answering my own questions we were just saying you know will it replace in a way it actually highlights like makes me appreciate even more the real conversations and the real people writing real words <laughs> because they, they stand out so much more now when everybody is using that so um yeah if, if i had to have to put that as a as a message it would be definitely use it but don't like just you know copy paste stuff use it to enhance what you're doing as opposed to completely replace it absolutely Cool. Uh, so you said you're not going to be using ChatGPT to write another book. Are you planning another book other ways that you're going to write yourself? <laughs> <laughs> not anytime soon. Writing a book and not self-published, by the way. The so writing mm. a book is it's a it's a journey, and I'm in the, I'm in the process now of just getting it out to as many people as possible. Which is the it's like when you run a race. Everybody mm. else is going for the water and the Gatorade to replenish what they lost along the way. The race really starts after the book is done. That's when it really mm. starts. That was the easy work compared to now getting mm. it out and sharing it with the world. So once I do that, then I'll consider writing another book. But again, I didn't have the intention to write a book. It just mm. came about. So I don't know if I'm going to do another one, but I'll tell you this much. Anybody that's looking to write a book, it's a very therapeutic process, mm. it's very rewarding. And I was able to put things in a book that I didn't speak about before because you're now you're just going back to AI, for example. Now it's just you and a computer talking. It's just you mm. putting your words into this Microsoft Word document. And there's no shame in that. There is no embarrassment about anything that you're writing down. It's just you're just typing words. 
Mm. You're able to express yourself a little bit more than you are with a person because you're not going to be judged until the book comes out. <laughs> if you read it, then it's like, oh, my God, I really said that. <laughs> <laughs> you, you actually it, it's funny that, uh, as you were saying, you know, the, the real work starts when it's done and then you have to get it out to the world. I have the impression that's the, exactly the case with, um, with business, with entrepreneurship, but a lot of people learn it the hard way. And I, I, I mean, I've experienced that obviously on my own, but, but I've also seen, I used to have an IT company where we would um, do websites and software for, for um, businesses, for entrepreneurs, uh, oftentimes first time, entrepreneurs so they, they would have that idea then we do the website and and you realize how many adult people you know intelligent people think like i'm gonna do that and it's brilliant and i'm gonna put that website online and then they sit and wait and it's like no that's just the beginning like you know you, you've done like the the fun part you know hey let's put that there that picture here and make that bling and it's like no no no, no that's just the beginning <laughs> yeah. you remember that saying that building and they shall come it doesn't work <laughs> it's just like you know you build a hotel and all of a sudden you're going to get guests it does not happen that way mm. it's you're fit when, when you start a business and you build out your your physical presence whether it's a storefront or online your physical store through shopify however you you decide to do your store and your web presence is there now so your building is constructed essentially and you have a mm. nice name on it. It looks nice. But people are going to walk past it just like they're walking down the streets in London, right? Like they're walking through Borough Market and trying to figure out where they're going to go and grab a bite. Something has mm. to grab them and pull them in and say, hey, try me. Mm. And that takes a lot more than just having a fancy website. A mm. lot more. And that's when it starts. And like you said, you can't just build it and they will come. You have to go find your clients, but the, it's it's not very, very difficult. It just takes work and understanding exactly like you said that, okay, now if someone finds me, there's a good description of what I do, but let me go out and hunt for people. So you have to mm -hmm. find out where your customers, who your customers are first. What's your target audience? Where these people hang out at, online, in person, where are your customers? And then you find them, what's the message? Mm. What message are you going to deliver to them that's going to get them to turn around and look at you and say, what did you say? Well, I said such and such. And the first thing they're going to say is, well, how does that benefit me? Mm. You have to be open and, and available enough to explain how what you do will benefit them. And then they're going to say, well, everybody does that. Now, how's it going to differentiate between how you do it and the next person? Well, mm. such and such said that too, but they're a little bit less than you are. Yeah, but here's the value. So it's a whole process that goes into building a business after you've built a business. Mm. Absolutely. Reminds me of, um, of um, like a, an analogy for some reason with, with running because I run and as, as we were talking, I was like, yeah, that's because you do prepare obviously for, for you know, you, you have like the daily, weekly, whatever training. But when it comes to, you know, a race, you still have to run the race. Like you can't just sit there and be I'm super prepared. <laughs> doesn't, doesn't happen that way, right? Yeah, absolutely. You have to do the work. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Last, no, before the last question. One question and then it's the last. We, just because we touched on, um, yeah, you, you have to do the work, you, you have to grab people's attention and then, you know, do the whole process of like holding their hand through uh, why, what are you offering? Why is it good for them? Why is it better than everybody else, et cetera, et cetera. In all that, in your experience, what is the role of naming um, and domains as part of that? Because you've been around, you said, for like 30 plus years uh, of the internet, on the internet, things have changed over time. So how, how is your experience with that? For, for example, for yourself, I noticed you, uh, like you, you using your name as the brand name. So you are the brand, which for a consulting business makes all sense. So what are your thoughts on that? That's an extremely important question that you just asked. A previous company I had for 29 years, nobody knew about it. Okay. <laughs> no one knew about it. $100 million in revenue. 
Nobody <laughs> knew about it. We didn't advertise. <laughs> we didn't have an email list. None of that. It's a total contradiction of what people will tell you you need to succeed today. We had no, so we had zero Instagram followers. We didn't have an Instagram <laughs> account. We didn't have a Facebook account. We had a website, which is just a company name. We had no followers in any capacity whatsoever. Zero. Mm. $100 million. <laughs> How did you right? do that? It's about relationships. We had relationships with huge corporations and we serviced them. So it was a business to business model. Mm. As a matter of fact, in our contracts, we could not even disclose the nature of our business relationship. Mm. So we were actually delivering services on their behalf. Some of the biggest names in technology you can imagine. Mm. We were actually going out and they wanted us to, our people to wear their shirts because they didn't <laughs> want the customers to know that they really didn't do those services, but they mm. were charging them for it and we were doing it. So the donate domain name for that business did not matter, not one bit, because mm. it wasn't a it wasn't a public facing company. However, to the contrary, what I do today is exactly right. My official business name is AR Kitchens Enterprises. Mm. That's the official business name, the legal entity, but it's branded under my name because. I am the product. So I'm the one that's delivering the services, the speaking engagements and the consulting, right? And we have mm -hmm. a team behind me, but it's a totally different thing. So the branding is, is hugely important. The domain name is extremely important because when people meet me, the domain name is the exact is my exact name. So mm -hmm. to your point, that's very important, but it depends on the type of business. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And um, I, I think it, I can tie it up to what we were saying at the very beginning, where we we're talking about how businesses change and people change, and all of that relationship grows together. Um, and it's something that um, kind of made me think about a lot of the entrepreneurs that I talk to. You can see they can sort of fall into two groups in a way that there are the people who don't think about that so they're they're like yeah but you know i'm just a local business or i'm just doing whatever thing now and their name is a giveaway for that because they're like i'm okay with that name even though it's limiting me to that product or service or, or that location and i'm sitting there thinking yeah but that's now so you're not thinking about the future and you have other people other entrepreneurs who I talk to and they're like, yeah, I know, like I'm coming to ask you, I know I can't afford that name now, but I just want to know, you know, how does it work? What would it take? Because they're thinking about, well, I'm small now and I'm, you know, I have a local extension domain name to whatever country, but they're thinking ahead already. And that's, that's a, I think, a huge difference. And I don't know if you could figure out some statistics um, of which type of, of entrepreneurs succeed more than the others, but what I can say definitely is like, if you look at successful entrepreneurs and dig out old stories, old interviews, you can see that like 10, 15, 20 years ago, they were talking about how they're going to be huge and global. And people were like, are you crazy? You know, what are you talking about? But they had that vision and it kind of affected how they plan things out down to the domain name. Yeah. That was one of the things that made us successful, Tatiana. When we were just three or four people, when I first started out, mm. once I started hiring people, we would have meetings in a conference room in the office. And I had a typed agenda with timestamps on it. Mm. For meetings, And that's what I learned when I worked at IBM. So I brought that experience with me where mm. you're, you're going to have a meeting, you start the meeting on time. Mm. You have an agenda. So you stay focused. You have talking, you know, I wouldn't have numbers on it today, you know, time slots, but you'll have you allocate time. You're thinking mm. about six months, a year down the road, what your company should look like. So you're exactly right. I think that was, I'm glad you mentioned that because for your audience, that's something that they really need to understand. When you are in business, you have to think of yourself being a $50 million company. Mm. Start that way from the very beginning, because what you'll do is you'll build processes and you'll build procedures and you'll build standard operating procedures for your company that mm. will allow you to scale to that point. Exactly. 
because put it like this, you know, the this, this saying with the fish, if you put a fish in a small tank, it's not going to grow. Mm. A fish yeah. in the ocean will get as big as the environment lets it until it gets eaten, right? Mm. That's the same thing with your business. If you're thinking small and you're just making these incremental changes and you're thinking about, you know, something on a very small scale, then you're not going to grow because you're going to keep that fish in that small container. I mean, take Apple, for example. Most people may not know this, but two, two examples. Apple, their name was Apple Computers mm. years ago. And I don't remember which year it was, maybe 10, 12 years ago. They dropped computers off of the end of their name. To your point, mm. now it's just Apple because there is so much further along than just making computers. Mm. That's one small piece of their revenue. At one point, yeah. Apple was really a phone company. When you looked at its revenue, they made more money off of cell phones than they made off of anything else. So they're essentially a phone company, mm. right? Dell, Dell who makes computers as well. The Dell's official business name is Dell Marketing. Mm. And what does that tell you and I, Tatiana, which is they're extremely good at marketing. It's not even about a computer. I don't even mm. know if Dell even makes computers anymore, but there's still commercials <laughs> for the Dell cloud. So they're mm. way beyond that domain that they had years and years and years ago, Dell computers, Apple computers. It's just Apple. It's just Dell. So that mm. thing from day one allowed them to say, we're going to grow into something else. And we're not afraid to spend $10, $15 million to rebrand if that's going to allow us to break out of this shell that we were in with mm. this small name like Apple Computers or Dell Computers. Mm. HP, yeah. most people don't realize. Hewlett Packard just made printers. Mm. That, that's all that they did before. And they merged with Compaq. And then now HP makes everything. They do everything, right? Again, to your point, they broke out of that initial brand. They broke out of that initial domain name that they had. And they said, we have to think outside a little bit more. Mm. Yeah. And yeah, and then that falls back to what you were saying at the beginning that that businesses grow, people grow, your consumers grow. I mean, you, you yeah, once you launch yourself into into that, there's absolutely no guarantee where you, where you'll go. Sometimes I think most most of the times, even I mean, if you've been visiting having a business, you know, for longer than five years, yeah, especially at the pace that things are developing now, I think you very likely probably shouldn't even bother trying to predict what you're going to be doing next. <laughs> you have to, one, one, another lesson I've learned is for the entrepreneurs out there, business owners is be open to possibilities. Mm. I was narrowly focused when I started my business, and I'm very glad that I did that. And most successful entrepreneurs to tell you, be laser-like focused until you can create this machine, this cash station, so to speak, where you now have processes that you can be away from your company for months, mm. and it still operates as if you're sitting there. That's a machine that you want to create, processes, procedures, but then be open to other opportunities as well, because your business can definitely take off in different aspects of what you do. But if you're so locked into not hearing about different opportunities, mm. then what's going to happen is you may not evolve. If I had a customer today that said, hey, from a consulting standpoint, what I really want to do is I want to bring you in and I want to, let's just say, do X, Y, Z. It's a little bit out of, outside of what you do today, but essentially it's kind of the same. It's just a different format. I would be crazy to not entertain that mm -hmm. because here's the thing with customers. Customers will tell you what they need. So if I say, Mr. Customer, no, thank you. You don't know what you need. I'm the mm -hmm. crazy one. Yeah. <laughs> but if my customer is saying, hey, consider this, because if, if you consider it and you do it, I would be able to hire you tomorrow. That's how our businesses evolve. Mm. Apple didn't just stumble into people being able to download music or stream music on an iPod. At some point, mm. someone said, hey, it's just another hard drive. You make hard drives mm. all day long for computers. Right. Yeah. And then somebody, some visionary had to say, you know what? There is an audience for that. 
there's a customer base. We should consider it. So don't be so locked into what you do today that you don't allow your customers to, to show you how other ways that they're willing to, to buy from you and hire you. Mm. Yeah. And, and definitely, I think that that can apply across the board for you know, the innovation, um, yeah, product, service, offering, everything that, and that is weirdly is something that people still do get wrong where where they get stuck in in their um, way of you know it's my business and I like it this way. It's like yeah, but you're not your client. <laughs> stay small. If that's what you want to do, just stay small. Yeah, that's it. And this, there's nothing wrong with that. There are some people who want that lifestyle, so, business, which is just they want to make enough money and they just want to be happy with not having to deal with them with, with work. And I get that. There's hmm. nothing wrong with that. So I, just to be clear, they are still business owners and they're still providing for themselves and their family. There's nothing wrong with that. Hmm. And then you have business owners and, and entrepreneurs looking to scale because they want to do it at a more substantial level. Those are the ones that need to really understand what it takes to grow. And you have to be mm. willing to, to, to have new opportunities. Mm. Absolutely. Well, that's been an absolute, absolute pleasure, Tony. Uh, one last question that I usually ask is, what are you up to now? What's, what's new and exciting? I am now, look, I'm on a mission to get in front of as many people around the world as possible to share this one message through my book, through my consulting, through speaking, which is this. Wherever you are today in life is not going to be a predictor of where you can be if you really wanted to. There is no nobility in struggling anymore. There is no nobility in just being average. We are created to be beyond average, to do extraordinary things. And just because you get a little bit older in life doesn't mean you should give up or forget about the dreams that you had when you were young. And even if even if you have to make a complete 180 degree turn and do something completely different than what you're doing today, if that's what your heart is telling you that you should do because that's something that you enjoy, or you're passionate about, then you should do it. Forget about what anybody else says because nobody, Tatiana, can look in your heart and truly know what makes you happy. But mm -hmm. they can tell you what they think would make you happy based on what's inside of their hearts. Mm -hmm. so right now, I just want to let everyone know that entrepreneurship is one vehicle that can get you to that destination. There are others, but mm -hmm. we have to we have to one day face ourselves in the mirror when, we, when we're going to have not much time left. And we're going to have to answer for what we did or didn't do to nobody else but ourselves. So are we going, mm. to, we're going to face ourselves and have regret and make up a lot of excuses why we didn't become that person? Or are we going to meet that person and say, I did way better than you thought I would do? Let's go mm. have some coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And and it's so true, actually. It's so like, as you're saying it, it sounds like, yeah, yeah, obviously. Duh. But then like, we don't often think about things that way. And um, it's, it's funny, you, you, because you were saying like, we're getting older and, and all that and it reminded me of the few old people that I've spent time with, usually relatives, like that I'm like, I'm talking really old, like we, we're not old, okay? <laughs> like really old people. <laughs> but have you noticed how it moves the old, like, because I, I remember when I was my, my kids, I was like 30, oh my God, those people are super old. <laughs> now, now I'm like, like I'm coming up to 40, I'm like, uh. <laughs> but yeah, so, uh, now, now, now what that's moved, like really old people, that's like 75 and over. Okay. <laughs> well, Tatiana, here's the thing. I talked to a really good friend of mine yesterday and actually I wrote about him in my book a little bit. His name is okay. Bill Pinckney. And he was the first African-American to sail around the world solo. Oh, wow. On a 47 foot sailboat. Here's the thing, Tatiana. He made that decision to do that when he was 53 years old. All it right. took two years to get funders. He left when he was 55 years old. Today, he's going to be 87 in September of 2023. Okay. And 
he would outrun you in a race. <laughs> this man. Oh, that's, you know, that's, uh, yeah. When you're talking about running, I love that because, you know, usually what you see is, you know, Olympics, and you usually see younger people, which is, you know, the spectacular sports. And I run in the mountains and like I'm, going up up in the distance so like it was like 15 20 30 like lately it's more like 60 kilometers in those races like people 40 over are outperforming like the the 40 60 category it's outperforming any other age and i had a i have a friend who recently joined the club and she's been running on the you know flat uh, shorter distances and she was like yeah look at those grandmas I'm like yeah look at those grandmas you got to be looking at their backs in a minute <laughs> <laughs> and you know what it, is? It, it 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 comes down to whether it's running or anything else like with Bill this guy doesn't give up mm. and he constantly has a new goal in mind every time he achieves one thing he okay that's it let me move forward he never talks about what he did in the past Mm. and hangs his hat on that it's always about something moving forward so now when he wakes up he has a reason to move forward he Mm. has a goal in mind and he's just the most energetic person that you ever want to meet 87 i hope at Mm. 87 that i have half the energy he has and Mm. again for an entrepreneur what a beautiful lesson is you don't there is no such thing as old. It's all in your head. So those people yeah. that you're talking about, the 40 to 60 age range, the bodies are maybe more conditioned for the younger people, but the mind had a longer time to prepare. Mm. Now you're 60 and your mind is telling your body what to do. Instead of when you're young, your body is telling your mind, I can't do this anymore. Then you stop. Mm. So that's exactly. that evolution that we talked about. What do you become in the process? Mm. Wonderful. Well, that's been really fun. And I'm, I'm very happy we ending up on such a like positive and optimistic note. Thank you very much. That's been a pleasure. You're welcome. This is a great interview. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for joining us in this episode of Smart Branding Podcast. Feel free to visit smartbranding.com for more information and reach out if you have any suggestions, questions, ideas, or just want to learn more about how a good domain name strategy can help you build a strong and successful brand. See you next time.